regular fading machine. It has a level. The level goes from the red number, which is let's say a zero to a half. So you have clips. The clips will be one, two, three, four, and each one has a different length. So let's say I put the one clip on it, level all the way up, meaning that'll be a one. When I bring the level down, that'll be a one and a half. So if I put a two clip on it, that'll be a two, that'll be a two and a half. In between, that's what you would kind of use to fade in as the numbers go up. So what I'm gonna give him is a skin fade, which is as tight and skin as we can get to it. So first, I like to clean up the area I'm gonna be working in with a good number, like a three or four, all the way down. Combing always against the grain. His hair's a little different because it kind of combs up instead of down or up, but pretty much the same thing. Can you try on this one? This one? So we can see, so we can see well, this one. Yeah, but, all right, because I'm pretty much going to show the back of the head is going to be mostly where. Oh. We just start with this. Right now, I won't notice that much, but when the numbers are lower, you'll see like little, little, like, like little daggers. Or even worse, you can actually poke the person. You know, because when you get to this, there's no guard. These are actually pretty little sharp blades. Skin? Yeah, I'll show you the zero. This is a zero blade. So zero when you just shape up the hair? No, we go lower than a zero. That's even lower than that. But we're jumping the step one. But that would be a zero blade. So this is the difference between a zero and a three. Skin fade, that's a skin fade. Yeah. yeah, skin fade will basically be all of this will be pretty much zero. And this, I'm gonna leave it, he likes this kind of length, so we're gonna leave it like this. But we're gonna make sure that it fluent the way it goes from nothing to his hair. It won't, it won't look like somebody just put a, uh, a bowl and just cut around it. That's pretty much what you're trying to avoid. No, that's what <laughs> And there is two ways that people would fade. Everybody has their own pretty much method. But the, because you can fade from up, down, and down, up. Meaning, the way to fade something will be, this is a three, right? This is a zero. So I literally have to go half, one, two, till I get to the three. But if you go from the half, one, two, you might bring this a little too high up, and now you're dealing with how much space do I have to fade. So the proper way to do it, when you're getting started, it might take a little longer, but you fade from the top down. Like, I will show you how that works. Like, You'll make your guideline, which is this, then instead of going from the down up, I will go three, two and a half, two, one, and then I'll just flicker at the end. You'll see. Right now, I'm just, I'm just basically cleaning up because it'll be hard to try to work with all of this hair. So you just take whatever guard you feel comfortable with, a big number. Like, I usually, you know, I go no bigger than a four, because by then, like, see here, if I press the machine in, I will make a hole. So basically what I'm doing is, like I said, I'm going up to here, and then once I get to, to where his head will curve in, I'll just flick it out. Or I'll just go straight up. Because you don't want to come into it, because then you'll just create it all. You know, so you won't be able to fade out. Yes, or anything like that. This line, the guy line, will pretty much be here. This will be like a normal fade line. For military. For no, no. For military, usually you'll just fade it up higher and tighter. But a normal fade, well, the line will be here. This, he's getting pretty much like a low, low fade. So it's pretty much the same technique, no matter what haircut you do. Even if, let's say somebody say, "Oh, I just want to taper." Same, same exact technique will apply to any haircut. It's basically you're blending in the line. What is taper? Taper will be. I'm gonna show you a taper as well before I fade it out. Taper will be, it's a baby fade. So instead of blending all of this, let's say some, you ever see somebody who just has this right here really nice and blend it out? Mm -hmm. That's a taper. Basically, I'm just tapering off the edges. Mm -hmm. But how would customers know those yes, words? Yes, yeah. Customer will ask you for a taper. I see you making 
stop that. Remember, I was telling you when y'all do your guideline, it's the occipital bone right up in here. And the occipital bone, normally in your occipital bone, especially in phage, you're really not supposed to go past that occipital bone. So this is like mostly in your guideline, and then it, it fades right in. Because mm -hmm. once you go higher within that occipital bone, then you get in that bold type. Of bone. Yeah. That so you see, when she said that's where exactly where regular fade will go. But since it's lower, you just bring it a little lower. You'll still always have to fade into that. If you start your guideline higher, now the space you gave yourself to work is this big. You know, there's no way you're gonna be able to like blend it out when you have that much. You just gotta give yourself enough space to work with. Usually, most this would mostly be your guideline. You never fade above the where the little I don't know what this point would be called, but right this point, you know, because if you fade up here, now he won't have like there won't be no so temple? You, no, yeah no 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 temples here like this little edge where there where this hairline and this hairline meet, you know. Mm -hmm. So you basically always want to keep that. So sometimes your fade doesn't have to be straight across. Like you can also take your guideline and bring it up and then guide it down towards, you know what I mean? Depending on, you know, it kind of all depends on the style and the head of the hair and how they want to go, but the technique will always be the same. It will always be just blending it over the same way. Some people would just like to work on one space at a time. Mm -hmm. There's no wrong way. You can do one space at a time, but you know, I'm just trying. Usually, I would just do like let's say I'm in the back. I would just do the back out, and then I will go from side to side. But it was a little more complicated to show it off like that. Once you got this line right, there's another machine that's called your outliner or your T-liner, which is the sharpest machine you're gonna have, which is something like this. This is what's used to make all the sharp lines. So if you wanted to get your beard done, if you want, this is the machine you would use. And also this is lower than a zero. So this will pretty much be skin. So anything lower than this will, have, it will be a, a straight razor. So um, I should be able to take off more with a razor. But this is pretty much, gives you the effect of um, a day after a razor, I guess. How you would feel the next day. So right now what I'm doing is, just I like to clean the neck out before I actually start fading because it makes it easier because I can literally see how far I can clean the neck. And this will actually be the last line. Um, some people will make their guideline with this and this will be the hardest line to remove because it's such a sharp machine. So the best way to do is create your guideline which is zero and then two. There's no removing because I'm not making it. You know what I mean? Sometimes if you want to make it easier to see like your, where you're going with the guy line, usually the, the lines are, done, are left for last. But you can always, you know, because he, he's a little messy, hasn't had a line in a while. So you can just... Depends how long 
people that hurt a grown. I mean, everybody's different. And with the line, all you're doing is basically tracing the areas around the head with the way that you know that it should go, all the excess hair. That's kind of pulling out. You can pull the ear back down as you with this machine, you have to have like a real light touch because it's really sharp. So any dagging, this is real sensitive part of the skin. So any dagging will hurt. And they say that this skin is just as sensitive as your inner forearm. So if you want to know if it's too sharp for him, go like this to your inner forearm. If it hurts there, it'll definitely hurt there. And usually the line in the back, unless they want something crazy like let's say a V or anything it all will start with just straight down even if you're gonna make a round because you know how some people have a round back you never try to just round it off because you will end up having this weird looking like too round you will just make it square and then slowly take off the corners giving you a nice overly round instead of a like, weird little round so the back will always, you will always just start it from the edge straight up to the top of the ear and once you get to the top of the ear you can start brushing all the extent there down and just shaking it around and using like the corner of the machine yes yes literally the corner of the machine that's how you will make um swirls like that's the only way you can like arch because the machine is um it's a straight line so the only way you can make and also using um that for the straight razor, that's for the straight razor. You use their skin. And even there, you can use their skin to manipulate how the line's gonna be. Meaning, I can put the machine straight down, but if I stretch his skin out, and I place it down, and I let it go, it's not gonna be a straight line no more. I just create an oval. So that's how, with the, that's how you create that nice swerve on the beard. It's not little by little. It's you pull the beard along, and I make a straight line. Once I let it go, it'll curve. You'll see it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'll be your best guideline. Like when she said, how high can you go on the side? Let me show you the, the line, the corner I was showing. So this corner is the one that, you know, I don't know if you ever heard people say, you pushed my hairline back or something like that, or that's basically where it goes from. Like you never want to go too in to try to make the line too sharp because A, by tomorrow that hair is growing back. So it's gonna look really bad. And it's gonna grow back really, it's really, strong hair so gonna, you're gonna see it. it's gonna be like really darkish so and it'll just look it looks really bad so you want to try to keep it as close to the natural line as it is like his will end here so i will comb up the excess hair following his natural line exactly where his line would be so even when it grows it won't grow it would just not be as sharp but if I came in a little too much you will notice it right away so that and that will be your second guideline for you for the side now move these little lines right here as you can remember it was a zero here right and then we did the half here right so basically I showed you both parts of the guard so how would I remove this one? That would be where you start playing with the with the little lever. So I will you always start playing from the top. So let's say the half, right? It's nice and clean. Now I will bring it up just a tiny bit, and I will go right on the line, but a little bit lower from my guideline. Just flicking right on that line. As you can see, it starts fading off little by little, little by little. Then I will bring it up even a little tighter and get even closer to the line. Sometimes you can even use just the edge of the machine because, you know, just so you can get a little angle on it. And you do this every time you switch guards or do you go back at any point? Well, I, I, I mean, like, or you did your first step. You gotta be able to keep, remember, I'm just doing that as a taper, but if you do it real quick, you gotta be able to keep track of which guideline is which because one mistake 
So you know what I mean? So that's why it's always better to go from the top down because you pretty much, once you're done with the three, you're done with the three. Then you're done with the two, you're done with the two. And then you're done with this one and you pretty much don't have to keep going. But you, if you want, you can, you can go, you know, you can, there's people that go just blend everything clip per clip or they'll do each guideline and they'll just, you know, and then come back and just blend, blend in between each one, one at a time. That's all preference. As long as the techniques are always, you know, as long as you're always using the, the guard and the length that's supposed to be in it. So this right here is where now it becomes pretty much where it becomes your skill. Because everything else is pretty much um, self-explanatory. You put this number on this number, this number on that number. In between these little areas is where there is no number. Now it becomes, you, you have to be a little manipulative. You know, because the hair switch angles and everything, so this is where you kind of, kind of try to catch as much as you can. And to be honest, the hardest part of the fade, of any fade, is from one to zero, because that's where all this blend, all this like fake, like like blurry stuff comes out. From there on, you're gonna see how easily this is gonna blend to this. You're gonna be like, oh man. The only part is. And lighting, the more lighting you have, the better. Alright, so it goes wider, wider, wider. No, no, once, once you get to the bigger numbers, it's a little more forgiving. Like, you'll have a lot more playroom. Like, I'll show you right now. The same thing with this side of the taper. You see my guideline, right? Now this is my my line. Now on the table, since it's such a small area, I can't just do that because what happens is once I start doing that, I'll start cutting into here, mm -hmm. making that you know. Now you start taking this out, making it more looking like a fade. So if I use just the edge of my machine, I can just do the little corners that I want. And most likely, instead of going straight up, I'm kind of going in a little oval. I'm blending it out like. Like on this side, so I go from here and I kind of blend like this. So now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side, which was create my guide, keeping the guide under the natural lining. And pretty much once you home free, you know? Because if you was able to blend that, now I'm gonna show you how the other ones would just blend any how the rest of the hair could blend in. So I started it off with a three, right? And then we went and got rid of this with the half and everything. So we're still missing from the three to the zero. We're missing the two and the one. Now I'll grab my two clip. I'll do a two and a half. Or if you want, you can just go straight for the two. And loosely, as long as we don't go over and we're pulling out, you know, we don't, it really doesn't mind that much if we go above the three. Because remember, we only use the three to clean up. So that's not really, you know what I mean? So this will be our new guide. So use this, making sure you don't go over the bone, because that's where you will need to fade out. As I'm always pulling out, like I literally place it on his head and the shape of his head guides me to it. Instead of going straight around his head, just as the same shape of his head, once his head turns, I just keep going straight up. So right now, I'm cutting in a 90. Everything is going straight up. When you go left and right? Hey, I will have to. But at the same time, pick, see where this part of the blade is. Never above, you know what I mean? And even if I go like this, I'm still keeping it parallel to his head. I'm never going into his head. Into. Yeah. But that doesn't happen for straight hair? Same thing for straight hair. The only difference for straight hair is the hair will be falling down. So now I will have to make sure I don't go in because then you have that little, you want it to, with straight hair comb back, you want it to blend into the fade. It's even a little more complicated because his hair, once I cut it, that's where it stays. Straight hair, you cut it, I move my hair. Now you gotta make sure that every time I move my hair, it, like, it falls back into that blend. 
So it's a little warm, but that comes now with your scissor work, which you guys, that's what you guys do, right? You guys are the pros at scissors, so. <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem. It's zero, then a half. So then one, one. Yeah, you, you need to go. And one, go two. to half. This is like one, seven, like eight. You'll grab your one clip, right? Which you'll write as your one. Then you start off with your one and a half. Your one and a half. Then you keep your one and a half under where you know that you put your two. So your two is mostly all of this. So you keep your one and a half under there. Then I go to my one, and I do the one right on the line. When him, it gets a little tricky because his hair, again, is growing this way. So what I'll do is I'll go back with my half. So I already did the one, and I'll go literally right on the line, trying to just get the little hairs that I feel it wasn't cut with the one because of the angle. But never going anywhere higher than that. Because I can always go back with a one, but I can never go back after I do the half too high, you know? Right. You can always, when him it gets a little tricky because his hair, again, is growing this way. So what I'll do is I'll go back with my half. So I already did the one, and I'll go literally right on the line, trying to just get the little hairs that I feel it wasn't cut with the one because of the angle. But never going anywhere higher than that. Because I can always go back with a one, but I can never go back after I do that half too high, you know? So now, you want to get rid of, like, this line right here. Which is the same way we did it all through. So we hit the one. try to place the clipper it seems like I'm going really fast but at first it, you don't have to you don't have to go fast for it to cut the clipper will cut no matter how slow you go so always try to place the clipper on the head and drag and like like a, like a lot more you want to kind of drag it up because most people when they, they see this and they what they'll do is they'll start digging it because they're not they don't really got they're not comfortable enough to you know so people do it fast but the machine cuts just even better if you know you don't gotta because even better going nice and slow it's just like around the uh, clean a little bit above here but we're not gonna clean it straight we're gonna kind of still keeping the, the, the length from the top to get behind the ear not hold not holding your machine flat kind of in an angle just so the bottom part can cut that little bit of hair that bulks up under the ear. For one, on that little, that little dark bulky line, that's the line we're trying to get rid of. So that will pretty much be how we'll blend it in towards the bottom. 